So, hello everybody in Lisbon. I hope you're all having a great day uh, today. And today I'm going to be talking about a uh, performance comparison between Zio, Akka, and Rust. So, my name is uh, Wim Vermeer. I've been doing uh, Java development since the beginning of this century, basically. And uh, the past five years, I switched to uh, Scala and I did uh, mostly uh, Akka projects and a bit of Zio uh, as well. And if you're a longtime fan of Zio, you may recognize my face from a few years ago when I did a talk at the uh, Functional Scala about um, running a web service using uh, gRPC. But today I'm going to talk about uh, performance because why? Well, let's say that uh, you are using Akka H3 on your project, but uh, there may be reason to look for alternatives, maybe because of license changes or uh, other, uh, other reasons. And you can look in the uh, community and see what's there. Well, one of the things that's there, of course, is Zio, uh, and uh, a lot of work has been going on with Zio HTTP. So this might be a viable alternative. And if I'm going to compare um, my, my web service uh, written in Akka to Zio, I might as well do another comparison at the same time, comparing it to the, the new kid on the block, uh, which is Rust, which seems to be very popular uh, these days. And just for fun, I uh, also implemented the same thing in, in, in Rust. So if you talk about uh, performance, a lot of work has been done in that area um, previously by, by many different uh, people. And especially I wanted to highlight uh, this very interesting site by uh, Tech and Power. And here they collect uh, benchmarks um, across a huge number of different frameworks. So in any kind of programming language, there's C++, Rust, Scala, Java, PHP, even anything uh, that you can think of. And what they've done, they have defined six or seven different benchmarks um, on how to measure the performance of all these different frameworks. And the benchmarks uh, all address a different property of the framework, such as uh, JSON serialization or database interaction, etc. And if you look at the top 10 on the screen, you will see that five of them in the top 10 are actually Rust uh, implementations. <clears throat> and Akka is also here. You don't see it here, but it comes in on uh, place 66, which is pretty good because uh, the, the list goes on for about 400 uh, different entries. So Akka HTTP is doing uh, quite well. And of, unfortunately, Zio is not on this list. I checked out there. There is an implementation of the benchmark uh, somewhere in the repository of uh, Tech and Power done by uh, Andre Plokotnyuk, but it's two years old. So uh, they don't appear in the, in the results. So to compare the performance, I created a very simple use case, and it is uh, originated from my, my real life uh, work. So um, it's about an authentication service. And we will send it a combination of username password in a JSON structure. To uh, This will be posted to an endpoint. We will deserialize the request and uh, pick out the username, send that to the database, check if we have a user under that email address. And if yes, we will get some information about this user, most notably their name, as well as their hashed password and the salt that was used to create this hash. And now we can hash the password we received in the request and check it to the hash password in the database. If they're the same, then they must have provided the correct password. And we hand out two uh, JSON web tokens. Uh, one is the ID token, the identity of the user, and the other one is an uh, accompanying uh, exit token. And both of them are uh, returned as plain text in another JSON structure. So this is it. It's a simple uh, web service. Uh, JSON coming in, JSON going out, database interaction, and some uh, cryptography to create these uh, JSON uh, web tokens. So let's take a look at the implementation of Akka HTTP. So these are the dependencies I needed. So uh, Akka itself, of course, and then you will see there's a the Hikari uh, database connection pool. Pretty standard, I think, uh, uh, in, in this line of business. And JSON for S for JSON uh, serialization. And um, I've configured the database pool to always fire up 10 different connections to the database. This is the default if you don't configure anything, but 10 seems like a nice number. And then, well, just to show some code, this is the implementation of the, of the handler. So uh, we'll get the post and uh, deserialize the request, go to the database, uh, check if the password is in fact uh, correct. And then if so, create a token pair, the, the, the two uh, JSON web tokens and they will be returned in uh, as a JSON structure back to the to the client. So nothing very spectacular happening uh, here. And of course, you see a lot of futures uh, here. And the next implementation would be in Zio. And here I'm using Zio HTTP before all the changes that are happening at the moment. So it's still a 005. And with that, you get Zio 2010. So um, 
might be interesting to rerun the same test uh, after 2.1 uh, is available. And so I converted what we just saw, the, the ACA implementation, into ZEO, and that's really easy. You just throw away all the futures and you put in the ZEO, and you're done, basically. So the structure is the same. It's still a four comprehension. Uh, you have to do a little bit more to uh, check that the JSON is correct. So you get an E there. That's why we have this uh, absolve in there. But the rest uh, looks pretty much uh, the same. And I should note that I also have an implementation of the, what was it called an hour ago? The undesirable or the, the unforgivable sin. So there's a zero succeed in here. Sorry about that. I didn't know about that uh, until an hour ago. I will never do it again, I promise. And in Rust, of course, there is no build SPT, uh, but there's something that's called the cargo 2ML. And this is basically a long list that I put here in two different columns of all the dependencies it needs to fire up your implementation. And one of the dependencies uh, in here is the Deadpool uh, connection pool, which I also configured to uh, fire up 10 different uh, connections. And there's another interesting line in this configuration, and it's about the, uh, the optimization level. So if you don't specify it, you'll get like regular Rust, but you can tell it to compile with uh, a higher level of optimization and your code will run faster. And because it, this is such an easy configuration option, I, I set it to three, which is the, the best performance. So the compilation and the build time are a bit longer, but in the end, your app uh, runs faster. So uh, I used the fastest possible configuration of Rust just to make sure we're on the, on the same page. And here the implementation is quite different. So for me, this was the first uh, encounter with uh, Rust. Uh, I learned a lot uh, doing this. Uh, so this is not probably not the, the, the best uh, Rust code uh, you'll ever see on the slide, but it gets the job done. And uh, you will recognize the, the if statement, checking that the password is correct. And if so, we are creating uh, two different tokens and uh, responding. So the result is the same, uh, except of course, uh, Rust doesn't know about four comprehensions, uh, but it does have a lot of features that Scala also offers, such as uh, pattern matching and uh, mapping, no flat mapping, but uh, mapping, et cetera, uh, and they are all there. And of course, the memory management is completely different in Rust. There is no Java virtual machine. So you have to manage the, the object that you create yourself, more responsibility to the programmer, but runtime, there's much less overhead. So where did I run these three different uh, implementations? Well, first of all, locally on my MacBook Pro, the specs are here, uh, locally, but inside Docker. And I also use this very nice uh, cloud framework called Fly.io. I didn't know about it until recently. It's very nice. You can just give it a Docker container and it will deploy it for you. It's extremely easy. Uh, by default, you'll get a shared uh, CPU of just one core and a laughable amount of memory. Uh, but it's very easy to upgrade it to a bigger machine with eight cores and uh, 16 gigabytes. And I ran the tests on, on, on both of them to see if there's uh, any difference. Then there's the question, what should we measure? So if we're going to compare the frameworks, we should do like a fair comparison. So I'm mostly interested in requests per second. So how many requests can your app take uh, per second? And as a secondary measure, I'm going to look at the memory consumption. I mean, what is it doing when it's handling all those requests? And to measure this, I'm using the, the tool called uh, WRK or work. I think you could pronounce it. Very simple, a very nice tool, uh, command line, and you can tell it to uh, fire requests to your uh, web service with a couple of parameters. So the first parameter is the uh, file which contains the um, content of the request you want to send. So the, the, the body in this case, you can tell it how long it should run. So duration of 15 here. It will fire from 24 different threads, and on each thread, it will create one connection. So 24 connections, those are the, the three different parameters. And of course, you have to tell it uh, which URL it should target. And if you run it, uh, like you see here uh, at the bottom, you see the output. And this, th this is it. So uh, and this is just the information that you're interested in at this point. So the request per second, in this case, was 11.46, okay, fine. So if you rerun this for different uh, implementations, et cetera, you can compare these uh, numbers. And there's a little uh, note on how often I ran it. So I took inspiration from how they do it on, at the Tech and Power uh, site. They start the app, then they fire just one or two uh, requests to check that the uh, app is uh, up and running. Then they run the work script for 15 seconds and stop it again. And then they run it again, and that's what they use for a measurement. So that means that you'll get like a fully warmed up and up and running uh, service. Then you hammer it for 15 seconds, and then you see uh, how well it performed. So without any further ado, here are the results. 
So this is the first uh, graph I'm showing you. So um, this is locally on my MacBook, so no Docker uh, yet. And you see that uh, Akan and Z are actually pretty much the same. So they can do uh, almost uh, 600 requests per second. And, um, oh, I forgot to mention that, of course, in Rust, you have various different uh, web frameworks. If you paid close notice, you saw that in the top 10, one of them is uh, Actix. This uh, seems to be one of the most uh, popular frameworks uh, out there. And um, that's the one I use for my Rust uh, implementation. And the, the Actix web framework in Rust uh, performs better here than, than Akka and Zio by uh, well, quite a margin. So then I ran exactly the same code in, in, in Docker. So um, uh, there the difference is a bit smaller. So still Akka and Zio are, are the same, which is nice. And the, the difference between Rust and Scala is a bit uh, smaller. But if I look at the memory usage, usage the difference is astounding. Um, I just uh, use the Docker stats to uh, to check this, and you can see that, uh, of course, Akka and Zio they have to fire up uh, a Java virtual machine. This takes up several hundreds of uh, megabytes, and Rust, well, all it does, uh, it can handle it in in four megabytes uh, only. So if you have like a resource constrained environment, uh, it looks like uh, Rust uh, is the way to go, especially because it, it keeps performing uh, very well. So, and then moving on to the cloud, this is the results for Fly uh, IO. So, like I said, I first ran it on these shared machines with very little memory and just one uh, CPU. You see that Zio is just a little bit better than Akka in this, uh, this case, and uh, Rust outperforms Scala by, well, almost double. So, I think this uh, again has to do with the fact that it can really handle very well um, the, the fact that it has limited uh, availability, limited resources. And then the fourth uh, result is when I tune the memory, the machine to go up to eight CPU with uh, 16 gigabytes of memory, then actually they perform the same. And this was a bit of an enigma to me, and I haven't really found like a good explanation. Um, the friend of mine who helped me set this all up, they, he suggested that maybe it has to do with throttling. Because fly oh, there is throttling at the request side, so you can only do uh, 25 concurrent requests at the same time. But maybe there's also throttling to the database or, or on, on output. I couldn't find out about it uh, yet, but I think, well, so there's more research to be done to really understand uh, the, the, the background of this uh, result. But anyway, so four different scenarios, so locally in Docker and, and in the cloud. And uh, well, it's basically up, you, up to you to draw your own conclusions, but still, um, when I look at, I think uh, it's great that Zio at least holds up very well compared to uh, to Akka. Um, if that's the only thing you want to look at when you decide to, to change frameworks, uh, there's no reason not to change. I mean, the performance is pretty much uh, the same. Uh, Rust is better in in terms of performance, especially in resource constrained environments. And like I said, you should really draw your own conclusions, or even better, uh, try to do, run these tests against your own use case. Uh, maybe like in previous talk about with with uh, the actor example would be interesting to see uh, because Akka of course also has these actor implementation and uh, make sure that you're really testing what you uh, what you yeah what your service is uh, is about. So that's all I have for today. I want to thank everybody who creates these great frameworks. I mean, it's not just Zio, but also Akka, of course, and uh, also in Rust. There's a huge community. Many people are working on improving. Uh, frameworks, the language itself, uh, etc. It's unbelievable what's, what's happening there. This is a great book if you want to get started on uh, Rust web development. This takes you through building a web service from 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 scratch, so you don't even need to know Rust uh, anymore. When you get this book, I'd like to th thank my friend uh, Oliver who helped me uh, prepare the material for this uh, talk and uh, take a look at my GitHub account if you want to get started with Rust or if you want to look at my uh, implementations because you don't agree with my conclusions. That's fine. It's all out there. Uh, let me know what you think about it. That was it. Thank you.